Well, this is a little troubling. Igor's lab has identified a concerning trend across the entire NVIDIA RTX 50 series graphics card lineup, including the low-end RTX 5060 Ti. Their extensive analysis suggests that most, if not all, partner cards from various manufacturers are susceptible to high temperature hotspots in power delivery area you can see this right here which could potentially lead to premature degradation and failure of these very expensive graphics cards after prolonged heavy use oh my goodness there's something else negative to say about the rtx 50 cards from nvidia this has been i don't know if you should call it a disaster because i suppose it's not that bad but Oh my goodness. So we've got this now to add to the driver problems, to add to the quality control problems, to add to the cable problems, to add melting cables, that is, to add to the melting connector problems. And I mean, I'm not even going to get into all this fakery, you know, the fake frames with AI and DLSS4. <laughs> Listen, I have an NVIDIA video card. And I've had a number of NVIDIA video cards. So, you know, before the RTX, actually the 40 launch was had its problems too. I have a 4090 and man, if you breathe on that cable, that connector the wrong way, or if you look at it the wrong way, it, it'll, it'll restart your computer system. And if you don't underclock it just a smidgen, and if you don't underpower it just a smidgen, it's not going to be happy. Games will stutter and games will restart. They do all kinds of funky stuff. So I'm not sure. Maybe NVIDIA with the RTX 60 series can fix all the problems. But uh, this trend does not seem to be a good one. And if they continue down this path, well, they're going to just, really PO gamers and they're going to switch teams. And oh, oh, I forgot also the cost on these. So let's get back to this particular article here about the thermal problems. Now, what is the problem with this? Why is the printed circuit board getting so darn hot? And like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a 5090, 5080, 5070, 5060, because it would seem, at least in this article, a 5070 reach temperatures of 107.3 degrees Celsius. The problem appears to be the compact design of the power delivery system because everything, well, is jammed together, very dense, right? So you get this high thermal density and voltage, and then you put it under heavy load, and you get this, a very, very hot, hot video card. And keep in mind, there's not only a dense configuration of everything smashed together, you've got everything smashed together, but you've got it on multiple layer so when you max this card out it's going to get really really hot under load now you know temperatures of 100 degrees plus is boy blistering hot and i wonder how is that going to affect the overall longevity of the video card it might in fact degradate it usually high temperatures will in fact do that. Not all of the RTX 50 series video cards are reaching temperatures over 100 degrees Celsius because in one case here, I think they tested a 5080 and it reached only, I say only, it's still hot, 80.5 degrees Celsius. Another one, which was a 5080, reached a really cool temperature of 70.3 degrees Celsius, while others, you know, were around 95 degrees Celsius. So they're all over the place, but still anything really, in all honesty, for a GPU above 80 degrees Celsius is pretty darn hot. Now, they did mention as well that significant improvements could 
could be made to the cooling of the power delivery system on all of the RTX 50 series graphics cards. The identified hotspots, again, you can see them here, often exceeds the GPU die temperature, and that is not a good thing. They raise concerns, as I just mentioned, about long-term reliability as sustained temperatures around 80 degrees Celsius are considered close to threshold. And of course, that will in fact, or at least I think it will, degrade the video card over time. And if you are spending, which you will be spending a lot of money on these, you want to keep this card for a number of years. And depending on what you're doing, I mean, if you're only gaming once a week on it, I suppose it doesn't really matter. But if you are using this all of the time and you're, you know, gaming, you're doing video editing, you're doing things that require the use of this video card, do you want to see temperatures that are this hot? Now, if you have a closer look at this image, you can clearly see that it's not like 80 or 100 degrees all across the entire video card. Some spots of it are cooler than others. In this particular example here, you can see that the GPU socket is at 70.3 degrees Celsius. That's that's okay. If, if you're maxing it out and it's 70 degrees Celsius, you know, those components are designed for that temperature. However, if you look a little closer to the right here, you can see temperature of 80.5 degrees Celsius, and that is starting to get really, really hot. But as I mentioned previously, there was a card that they tested, apparently a PNY RTX 5070 that reached one hotspot was 107.3 degrees Celsius. I call it cuckoo. What do you call it?